I would like to talk a bit about being born again. So a lot of people tend to associate being born again with being born as a babe, as a small being. But I'd like to explore the side of being born again where it's associated rather with the grave, with tomb, with death. I'll go ahead and read the key text that we read earlier, John 3, 7. It says, Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. So here it states that you must be born again. When we are born again, we are a new body, completely innocent as babes. And it's the same when we are born again in Christ. We are innocent, we don't know completely about the truth, we are a new being. In 1 Corinthians 3, 1, it says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. It says here that we, when we are born again, we gain power from Christ. He does not give us all the information suddenly when it comes to knowing him but he gives little by little just as babes you don't give you don't give small children cake or all of these big foods just yet you have to start small you have to uh, start from milk to then baby food to something small and then you grow to more bigger things and it's the same with our journey with Christ. We must first start small, we study here and there, and then we are able to gain more knowledge. In 1 Peter 1, 23, it says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Here in Peter is saying that with us being born again, we are not the same person that we were before. When we are born again, we are clean. We are, well, it says here in the verse, by the word of God, we are incorruptible. So when we are born again, we become a completely new person and we are able through God to continue living that way. We cannot do it on our own. We are no longer weak, but we are strong in our connection with God. And we're able to endure a lot of things. Sometimes we won't be able to, to when before we have this connection with Christ, we are probably faltering in some areas. We may mess up, and but as we as we grow closer to God, we are able to grow stronger, and we are able to endure many things, many trials that come by. So, what is? So how can we compare this to the grave? Because I said at the beginning that this is, it, it, we are associating this with being born again, but how can we talk about the grave as well? So when we are born again, something dies, right? We are not completely the same person. So something that dies when we enter the grave is our human nature, our past um, our past actions, our thought process, the way that we used to act dies because now what is taking over is Christ's nature. We die to self. And just like Christ, when he was resurrected, he became a new person. And just like that, through him, we were able to do that. So what are a few examples? I'd like to start, we're going to have like three examples, and I would like to start with Zacchaeus first. So Jesus was entering the city of Jericho, and there was a man, his name was Zacchaeus. He was basically run, basically just those people that you don't normally associate with Christ. He kind of had his, his own mistakes and his own things that people didn't really like about him. He was known as a cheater, as somebody who tries to steal, who tries to cheat people out of money. He was a tax collector. So he heard that Jesus was coming. Um, in Luke 19, 4, it says, 
and he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him for he was to pass this way so he heard that jesus was coming and he heard about this man before and he wanted to know what he was about he was a very popular person among the the surrounding people and so he was wondering what this person was for him and sometimes we are the same we we have our own sycamore tree i like to think of the sycamore tree as our safe spot we hear that jesus is coming so we come to church and we see that all of these people are blessed by jesus and we are in our own sycamore tree and we find a comfortable place to see him from afar we kind of like peer over everyone seeing what it's like and we are not ready yet to make this change just like zacchaeus he sat up in his tree for a second he, he didn't even come down until jesus came straight to him so sometimes we are a little bit uncomfortable but but jesus is calling us to come down just like he called zacchaeus he told him to come down from the tree that he would he would come down and dine with him and jesus wants to dine wants us to dine with him as well so we need to step down from our sycamore tree and to to and we need, he need we need to come down from our sycamore tree and to be open to dining with christ in our hearts in job 5 26 it says thou shalt come to thy grave in full age like as a shock of corn cometh in his season so this reading it as it is it basically says about you know growing old and um, dying but I would like to take this first and rather apply it to this to this concept of becoming a new person and sometimes we might not have the same experience as others and sometimes we might have it a bit late or a bit early than others we all have our own timing kind of how it says in the verse that um, thou shalt come to thy grave in a full age. So it has its own timing. You may not have um, a grand experience as another, but sometimes your experience could impact others in a way that another person's experience might not have been able to do. So let us go back to Zacchaeus and see how he was born again. In Luke 19.5, it says, And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him, and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. So Jesus is asking for us to come out of the sycamore tree, out of our comfortable place, and make ready our hearts for him to abide in. He wants to live with us, he wants to be with us, and he wants to become one with us. So, how did we see the results of Zacchaeus coming down and making that decision to dine with the Lord? We saw it in his actions. In Luke 19.8, it says, And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. So Zacchaeus, in a way, died to self because he built up this reputation of taking money from others. And so he had probably, well, in his eyes, he was very successful. So for him to die to self and give not only the money that he took, but also four times that money, it really, lets, it really shows how much God had worked through him. And that he was he was able to do that and I'm pretty sure if he had not met Christ <laughs> under that tree I'm pretty sure he would not have had that thought to help those which he had done wrong but he wanted to do double that and that's what God does when he comes and he abides with us he he allows us to he, I mean he gives us the power to be able to make decisions that we never would have done it in our own human nature now to go to our next example is the soldier in Capernaum. Remember, um, this soldier, he was a high-ranking officer in the Roman army, 
and he had a servant which was doing a very good job but that servant ended up being sick and in Matthew 8 5 it says and when Jesus entered into Capernaum there came unto him a centurion beseeching him so this soldier had come to Christ and was asking to help him with the servant in Matthew 8 6 it says, And saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And so the soldier tells Jesus that his servant is not doing too well and that he needs help. And believing in God, he wanted to, for God to heal him. And Jesus actually offered to go to the house, to go to the soldier's home. But something that is something where we see the dying to self is when the soldier actually decided and said that it, he was unworthy and for a ranking officer saying that you weren't unworthy to what seemed like a mere mortal man, mere man from from the Jews, it was unheard of to say that you were unworthy to have this man in your home. But the soldier said that it was just a single word from him would be sufficient. In Matthew 8, 8, it says, The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. In Matthew 8, 10, it says, When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in Israel. So here we see that there is more than just, when, when being born again, there's more than just dying to self, but you also need to have faith and believe that this is the truth. You need to believe that God will make that change in you. And even Jesus said that even a centurion had he had he not found any greater faith than this person in Matthew 8 13 it says and Jesus said unto the centurion go thy way and as thou hast believed so be it done unto thee and his servant was healed in the self same hour so being the work that is done in us and being born again it has to work through faith as well we saw the works in Zacchaeus. He was able to give more than what he took. And then we see here that it's through faith that we are able to be healed physically and spiritually. So when we are born again and we believe in God and we have faith, we are able to be healed spiritually inside and also physically. Now, our final example is that of Lazarus. In John 11, 1, it says, Now, a certain man was sick, named Lazarus, of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. So, in this town, there was this good friend of Jesus. His name was Lazarus, and he wasn't doing so well. He was actually sick, just like, uh, just like um, that servant from the last example. It says in John eleven four, when Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. So here we see that despite what seems like bad news, to Jesus he knew that even if Lazarus would die, he that death would be for the glory of God. And sometimes that might be the same for us. Sometimes we might lose something or sometimes something might go wrong in our lives, in our spiritual lives. But we need to always remember that the things that God can do for us, it doesn't, even the things that may be negative could be actually used in return to um, glorify God and to show his blessings to others. So going on with the story with Lazarus, he was then proclaimed dead. And sometimes we might be dead in spirit or, or just like we feel abandoned, but God has not forgotten. He comes 
he's always there and he's always ready to help. In John eleven seventeen, it says, Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. So Jesus is always ready to help, but sometimes it might not be at the time that we feel like it's necessary. Sometimes it may take time, sometimes it may take years, sometimes it may take months, sometimes days, but we never really know. We must always be, be thankful and to be, uh, I, we must always be mindful and remember that God has his timing. In John eleven thirty eight, 38, it says, Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. So here we see that he comes to the burial place of Lazarus. And with the cave and with the stone, I thought that maybe it kind of reminds me of a stony heart. Sometimes we may be in a grave and in a graved state more like in our head and sometimes our heart is covered by a stone sometimes we had bad experiences before and we're not sure if it will get any better from here and sometimes our heart might be hard a bit to hear the word of the lord but some but jesus is always there and is always ready to remove that stone from the heart we just need to accept it in psalms 51 10 it says Create in me a clean spirit, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So we must ask God, we must be willing, we must be open for this new heart to be given. In Job seventeen thirteen, it says, If I wait, the grave is mine house. I have made my bed in darkness. Now, there is God's timing, but also must be ready when God asks us to do what he wants because sometimes the timing might not seem as convenient for us so we might push it off to the side and say this might not be what is important right now I need to focus on myself and we forget that God knows all but we sometimes may be living in darkness but just like Lazarus we need to come out to the light. So there's a popular saying that says darkness comes before light and your darkest hour before the dawn. And so it's the same for us. Sometimes it might, we might feel like we're in the deepest of pits and it's super dark and there's no way out, but Jesus has the power to take us out of that darkness. and. Sometimes even that darkness might help you appreciate the light more. Sometimes when you're in this sticky situation, you come out of it and you're appreciative of so much more. In John eleven forty three, it says, And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And Jesus asked us to do the same. He asks us, just like Lazarus, come forth. He asks us to come out of this grave, out of this darkened state, and to become new with him. Because once again, the, the, the final step in being born again is becoming one with him. In John 12, 17, it says, The people, therefore, that was with him when he called Lazarus out of his grave and raised him from the dead, bear record. So here we see that even through this sad moment it was actually able to be a, glor a, a sign of glory for God and sometimes it's the same for us through our negative experiences it could actually help others it says here that that they bear record which means they were going and telling out other people about this experience that happened about Lazarus and it might be the same for us no matter how small our experience may be no matter how small the experience may be, it might be just enough to help somebody to come closer to God. Others will see what he has done in you and in me and would want the same. In 1 Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians 15, 55, it says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The best part about this grave is that this gra this spiritual grave is that we don't stay there forever. The story does not end there. Just like Jesus, he didn't his story did not end when he died on the cross. But 
his story continued on, and so does our story when we, uh, when we exit the grave and when we become victorious with Christ. So I would like to end this off with a prayer that we may all be victorious and that we may all be able to walk out of that grave, out of that darkened state, and become a new person and a new heart with Christ. Amen. Amen.